when we have been in, in Jesus Image Conference, Ben Fitzgerald uh, said about uh, Bible revival. So we need it. Amen. Amen. Lord, send the Bible revival in our generation. Amen. 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 To love your Bible, to, to, to love your verses, to, to keep your verses, to keep it by heart, to, to recite the Bible verses, to be like the man who is like a tree uh, rooted by the streams of water, to be fruitful in all seasons. Amen. 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 Yeah. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, uh, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short uh, stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And then Jesus came to the place. He looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, Make haste and come down for today, I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all murmured, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, look, Lord, I give half of my anything, I give half of my sorry, goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore. Fourfold. I don't know after he did what, what he said, how, how much has been left to him. He said that if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. Uh, and I give half of my, my goods to the poor. And Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham. Uh, for the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. I believe... Uh, if I may start my message uh, this morning, that uh, many of you has come as Zacchaeus, who uh, we are coming to see the Lord, and we are coming to uh, to behold His face and to behold His glory. Uh, and many, many times we we just feel we are in doubt if if the Lord even sees us. You know what I mean? Does does He even see me? Does He even uh, recognize me? Does does He even know that I have have taken this course to, to come to the conference and? Maybe I left a job, maybe I left my family, maybe I traveled for for hours driving or, or took a plane to, to come here. Does, does the Lord really see me? Yes, He sees you. Yes, He sees you and He calls you by name. Amen? 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 Do you believe in that? Yes. He sees you and He calls you by name. And the interesting thing that uh, that the Lord did not ask anything from the case. He didn't, he didn't tell the Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, you have been, a, you have been a, a tax collector, you have taken so much from the people, you should return this. What? Did, did you read it in the Bible? Yeah. Did you, did you yani, recognize that the Lord didn't ask, ask from him anything? He didn't tell him to give anything to anyone. Yeah. Just being Zacchaeus in the presence of Jesus, he realized that how, how sinner he was, and how, how all, all, the, all this collecting the money that he did, and... and, and uh, uh, taking uh, taking unjustly from from people and, and maybe being unjust in his tax collection, he realized that he has to, to give. He, he does not need all the riches anymore. He, I give half of my money to the poor, and if I have condemned, uh, I made a false accusation to anyone, I restore for fault. And and that that what the love of the Lord uh, does to us. Amen. If we are speaking about repentance, if we are speaking about transformation, if we, if we are speaking about uh, being uh, escaping this system of Babylonian system and the system of the world and, and Satan and sin, it could only be done through the love of God. Yeah. By receiving his love, by, by his, his, his receiving his grace and his empowerment and his spirit of love and spirit of grace that empowers us when we see his face. When, when we really in, in, uh, in deep in our hearts and deep in our souls, when we really know that He really knows us, He knows me. He knows me, He, he, he recognizes me, he, he acknowledges me, He knows my name, He knows me by name. And He calls me, uh, yani, uh, among many people, Zacchaeus was the only one on the tree, and, and he, Jesus could have had dinner at any at one house, maybe a, a Pharisee house or a, or a, or a rabbi in the synagogue, or, or any or any just man, or any righteous man in the community, but Jesus saw the case and he called him by name the case. If you feel like you are as a case, the Lord knows you by name. Amen. If you feel like as a case who, are, who is just coming to the conference and I don't know if he sees me, if uh, if I fit in, uh, many of us in, in, in the start of our walk in the Lord, uh, we always 
feel that we, we do not fit in. I'm strange from these people. These people, you know, they are worshipping with their hearts. They raised their hands. Some of them were waving flags uh, in the other room. Uh, oh, they, because I'm, I want Jesus, maybe I am the weird one. Maybe I do not know Jesus as well as they do. Uh, so who am I? No, no, if you are the case, the Lord sees you and he knows you by name and he calls you and, and he chooses you. You especially to spend the night with you. Amen? Amen. Receive that. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Receive, re receive it. Receive it. Lord, if, if I come here like Zacchaeus, I know that you call me by name. That you see me. I'm not, a, I'm not a, an outcast. I'm not unfit. You, you, know, me, you know me by name, you, you call me by name. Amen? Amen. 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 Uh, we'll continue our, our talk today about the same theme that, that the Lord has been uh, speaking to us uh, yesterday night. Uh, and I want, I want to start with this. The Lord is in the business of changing names. Because I, want to, I, I don't want to leave you with a message of, of, uh, of how, how, how Satan has been trying to distort and destroy our generation. But, 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 but the good news is the Lord is redeeming our generation and redeeming our identities. Amen? Amen. Amen. And the Lord, from, from the start of the Bible to the end of the Bible, the Lord is in the business of changing names. Yeah. Everyone, not everyone, but, but many people the Lord has met in the Bible, He, has, he, he, he does not only change their destinies or, or change their reality or change their lives or transform their lives, He even changes their names. And what does name, a name speak about? A name is, a, is your identity. A name is who you are. Uh, if, if, you, if you had an interview with, with anyone, if you get to know uh, anyone, hey, what's your name? My name is so and so. Uh, what do you do for a living? I, I work as a kaza, maybe a physician, maybe a dentist, maybe uh, in a restaurant, maybe a driver. Uh, uh, this is your identity. This is how you define yourself. Identity is how you define yourself. If the, if the main characteristics that, 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 that separate you from, from anyone else around you. And, and most of the time, we define ourselves by the negative stuff. Most of the time, we define ourselves by the, by the mistakes, by, uh, by the habitual sitting, by, uh, by what uh, negative stuff we have been through, by, by my, my negative memories from my past or from uh, my family. And, and, and the good news is, when we really meet the Lord, the Lord is able to change our identities. Okay. Hey, you have you you wear this Zacchaeus, but now you are a new Zacchaeus. Hey, Simon, you are not now Simon. You are Peter. You know about Saul. Saul who met the Lord at the road to Damascus. Hey, Saul, you are you are not Saul. You become Paul. Okay. Amen. Okay. Amen. And and that what I believe the Lord is wants to do this this morning. Uh, let's open our Bibles first to Genesis 17. One of the old uh, stories in the Bible in which the Lord changed names. Genesis 17. Let's read from verse 1 to verse 7. When, when Abraham was 99, Oh, how, how old was he? 99. Who is here 99? <laughs> who, who is here 80? You are not, you, you are not even close to how old Abraham was when the Lord changed his name. So it is not, it's not even that late for the Lord to change your life. Amen? Amen? Amen. When, when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am Almighty God, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and will multiply you exceedingly. Actually, the Lord has, has given this promise before to Abraham and told him that uh, I will give you uh, the seed and, and I will bless you and will, I will make you a blessing to all the nations. Then Abraham followed on his face and God talked with him, saying, uh, as... Uh, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of 
many nations no longer shall your name be called Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you, I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you, and I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant to, to be God to you and your descendants after you. Yeah. Abraham, what does Abraham mean? Abraham means an honorable father. But the Lord's promise for Abraham to be a Lord for many nations, a father for many nations. So the Lord changes Abraham's name from an honorable father to a father to many nations. And, and what, what, that is what Abraham means. And, and that's what the Lord does in our lives. When we, meet, when we first meet the Lord and we, we hear about this, uh, we hear about holiness, we, we, we hear about uh, living for God and reading our Bibles and, and doing good things, we, we start to ask ourselves, how could I do these things? You know? How, 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 can I, how can I live the way the Lord is calling me? Actually, you are not living the way the Lord is calling you by your power, by, your, by yourself, by, by, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, spirit say, the, say the Lord. So you are not living this life by how you are managing life and how you are, uh, okay, I will try to read the Bible, then when I try to read the Bible, I cannot understand the Bible, so I stop reading the Bible, and then I go to church, and then I stumble in some relationships, so I stop going to church, I start praying, but I, I find Satan uh, fighting me when, when I, I start praying, so I stop praying, then I, I, I give up on this Christian living. No, it is not about you. It's not about Abraham trying to give birth to many nations. It's about the Lord God Almighty who meets Abraham and, changing, and changes his name. Amen? Amen? And that the Lord is doing with us. That the, when the Lord meets us, it, he, he can change our identity. So what, what does it mean? It, it means that you, you stop identifying yourself, but, but what you know is true about yourself. If I, if I ask any one of you, what, what are your weaknesses and what are your strengths? We have answers. Correct? We have answers to these questions. Oh, my strengths are 1, 2, 3, 4. My weaknesses are 1, 2, 3, 4. So, uh, do, do these weaknesses align to the call of God? Most of us would say no, they do not. Uh, the Lord is calling, calling me to evangelism, but I have fear of people. The Lord is calling me to, to, uh, to play music, but I have no time to train. The Lord is calling me for business, but, uh, but I, I, I feel all the time that I have no wisdom in business. Uh, so, what, what the solution? Okay, I, I, may, I may take some courses, I may go to some classes, I may, I may learn some stuff. Okay, all, all of this is good. But all of this does not change Abraham from Abraham to Abraham. All of this does not change your identity, your definition of yourself. What we really need in our hearts is a change of identity. It, it's a real transformation of, of how you see yourself. And I cannot change. Who, who gave you your name? Your parents. Why? Because they are the people responsible of you. They have the authority over you. And while they are declaring this name over you, they declaring a, a, a certain destiny. Maybe it's a bad name. There, there are many, many people in the Bible. Uh, Rebecca, Rebecca was, was Rebecca? Or Rachel, Rachel was, was giving birth to, to her son, uh, Benjamin. Benjamin, right? Benjamin, in English? Yeah. Benjamin? Yeah. Benjamin? Yeah, Benjamin. She was dying while giving birth to Benjamin. So, he, so she called him uh, the son of pain. The, the son of death. So Jacob heard, heard, heard this name. No, 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 I, I cannot call my son the son of death. Maybe, maybe you have been born in a family that has been calling you since birth. You are, you are the son of pain. You are a daughter of pain. Your life has been always tough, your life has been always hard, you are worthless, you have no value. Uh, I, I, wish, I wish that you, you, you never came to this life. Maybe your parents does, did not want you from the first. But Jacob, because he is a son of promise, he knows that he cannot name his son a son of pain. So I changed his name. No, no, I will call him Benjamin. And what does Benjamin mean? Son of strength. Amen? Who can do this? The one who has authority above the authority of my parents is the Lord himself. And if my parents gave me names, names that made me, made me to, to be identified more with, 
with sin or weaknesses or or certain stuff in my life that I feel I I, I inherited some stuff from you know I, I inherited this anger from my parents I inherited this lust from my parents I my, my parents has been separated uh, I feel I feel always abandoned I feel always unloved I, I feel always unrecognized I I always feel that I am a failure why because my parents had had said so and so uh, my my siblings had said so and so my uh, my cousins has been always mocking me when I, when I, I was young uh, I, I cannot change myself yes you cannot change yourself but there is one who can change you the one who can change you who can who can call you by new names above the name that the that the names that you have been receiving all your days right. amen yeah. and and that's what the lord has done to abraham abraham hey you know, if, if you stay in Abraham like you are, you will never be a father of many nations. I have to change your identity. Wow. And, and please uh, receive this image. Use your imagination. After this incident, Abra Abraham still had no kids from Sarah. Correct? Uh, he, uh, uh, in, in Genesis 19, he had his first kid, Isaac, from Sarah. Uh, imagine after this uh, encounter with the Lord, Abraham uh, returns to, to Sarah. Hey Sarah, please, wh when you call me from now on, do not call me Abraham, call me Abraham. What does Abraham mean? Father of many nations. So, in, in one morning, Abraham has, has many slaves, has many, had 318 families living around him, around his premise. So, Sarah wakes up one morning and goes out of the tent. Hey, Father of many nations, please come. Every, everyone around Sarah, oh my God, Sarah has gone crazy. She has gone mad, oh poor lady, because she can't have kids. She's imagining that, that Abraham has become a father of many nations. Abraham has called father of many nations be, before he had many nations. Yeah. And what the, that is what the Lord is doing in our lives. He calls, he, go, he calls us by new names even before we see it uh, uh, starting to happen. Right. And I have to believe in this identity and I have to use it. Yeah. Remember yesterday when I was speaking about uh, 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 Daniel, how, how, how his, his, his friends should call him by his identity. And I have to find myself people who call me by my new identity. Right. Yeah, yeah, there, there is this group of friends, whenever, whenever I'm among them, they remind me with my old self. Yeah, 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 you should leave them. Oh, but, but they have been my friends for whole life. Yeah, yeah, have they done to you any good? You have, you have stayed the same whole life. Right. They are, they are always dragging you down. They are always negative. They are always speaking negative things about the Lord, about you. They are always reminding you of your failure. Hey, you should you should change tanks like a fish change tanks. Separate yourself from these old things that remind you with this old identity. Receive the new identity. Oh, uh, uh, so uh, uh, do you mean that after this incident, uh, uh, Sarah? got the sun uh, miraculously at this moment? No. She has been calling him Abraham for, for maybe uh, more than one year before before he really be become the son of Isaac. Uh, sorry, father of Isaac. But he believed in this identity and he started calling himself by this identity. So when you receive this identity, you write it down, you, you write it on your notebook. You, you should have a notebook while you, have, you are having quite time. Okay? Do you have a notebook? Do you have notebooks? Yeah. Buy one. Buy a notebook. Put it in your Bible. Write, write down all the things that the Lord is speaking to you. Remind yourself with it. So when you, when you forget the new identity you received from the Lord, you get back to your notebook and you, remember, you remind yourself, oh, oh, yes, I'm not Abraham anymore. Right. The, the Lord has called me Abraham. Amen. Because it, because everything around you from the enemy and from the world will try to remind you with your old identity, and you should remind yourself of the new identity. Right. And that the Lord tell to Habakkuk, you know Habakkuk two, uh, uh, script the, the vision, yeah. so that uh, the one who reads it may may run. I don't so I'm translating it from Arabic. I don't know. That doesn't even make sense, but uh, I'm doing my best. <laughs> write write the vision down. Yeah, sure. Write the vision down. Write the, this new identity down. Um, yeah. Amen? Amen. Let's see another one. Oh, the Lord changed his name. Genesis 32. And this one is uh, 
is so near to my heart. Why? Because he's struggling with our struggle. Jacob. Let's read from verse 32. Sorry, 22, chapter 32, verse 22. And he arose that night and took his two wives, his two maidservants, and his eleven sons, and crossed over the ford of Jabbok. He took them, sent them over the brook, and sent over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone, and the man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go. The angel of the Lord said to Jacob, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men, and you have prevailed. What is the story of Jacob? The story of Jacob is, I don't know if, if you have read the story before, but Jacob was uh, the second son. But through uh, deceit and through trickery, he stole the blessing from his older son. At this, at this story, at this incident, Jacob was returning back to his to his father's land, and we, on his way to his father's land, he knew that he would meet meet Esau. Esau, his older son, who Jacob's know that uh, sorry brother, who Jacob's know that Esau is very angry with, and uh, and he wants revenge. So at this at this moment Jacob is, is broken. Uh, Jacob has been fighting all his days. He has been fighting with his father, has been fighting with his brother, he has been fighting with his uncle, Levan, uh, has been fighting for with his wives. He, he wanted to marry Rachel, but uh, but his father in law gave him his her elder sister. Uh, he has been doing all this stuff uh, depending on his strength, depending on his uh, arm, depending on, on his uh, wisdom and his power and trying to, to achieve everything uh, that he wants with his strength. And, and I believe that is the most of us these days. Uh, the world presents us with, with so many potential and, and I, I, I keep fighting and fighting, I keep running. I keep uh, wanting to achieve, I, 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 I'm trying to achieve, but I cannot achieve, so I become drained like Jacob did, and, and I just face these uh, this, uh, fears that, that I'm going to, to face, and, and I feel drained from the inside, and, and at these moments, the Lord uh, loves to encounter us. Yeah. In, at this moment of weaknesses, at this moment of brokenness, when we have nothing else to do. Jacob, at this moment, has nothing else to do. And, and I love this verse, verse 22, and he arose that night and took his two wives. Uh, sorry? Ah, verse 24, then Jacob was left alone. Jacob was left alone. He feels he is alone. No one to help, no one to ask for help. He has nothing else to do. He is he is waiting for Esau to meet him at any time. Maybe he, he will kill him. Maybe he will kill his, his wives and, and all his descendants. And the Lord encounters him at this, at this moment. Jacob asked for a blessing. And I, I, I so much love this, uh, this part. What is your definition of blessing? Did, did, you, did, did you hear before uh, uh, this, this verse is preached? Lord, I will not. Uh, yeah, Lord, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Let us imagine that I am preaching this message to you, and I am I am leading you into prayer. Please pray with me, Lord. I will not let you go until you bless me. What is what what is in your mind about this blessing? Wife. Maybe maybe a wife. Maybe more food. <laughs> Maybe maybe money. more money, yeah. Maybe a better career, yeah. Yeah. Are are these all good blessings? Yeah. Yes, they are. They're not bad. Maybe a better car. Maybe a better job. Maybe a, a higher salary. Maybe a better ministry. Even if if I'm, a, yeah, I'm, I'm a, some sort of a spiritual guy, maybe some ministry or 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 maybe some encounter with the Lord Himself. Correct. 
these are all good blessings and, and the Lord really gives, gives us these blessings. Yeah. But the Lord didn't give you, give, give Jacob any one of these. He asked him a simple question. What is your name? And didn't, the, didn't the Lord know his name? Yeah. He knew his name. What is your name? Oh, he, the Lord wanted to remind Jacob of him, of how he sees himself. I'm Jacob. And what does, what does Jacob mean? Jacob means the one who is following and the one who stumbles others to achieve his, his dreams. That's the meaning of Jacob. So Jacob is saying, I, I am the second. I always feel the second. I always feel the second. And I always feel that I have to do everything to gain what I want, to achieve what I want. Hey, Jacob, I can give you money, I can, but you have money. I, I, I can give you wives, but you have wives. I can give you riches, but you have riches. But I will give you the, th the thing that you need the most. You need your identity to be changed. You will not be Jacob anymore. You shall be called Israel. And what does Israel mean? A prince with God. A prince with God. Hey, Jacob, what I want to tell you, you don't need any of this blessing that we have been speaking about. Actually, what, what you need is not a wife, is not more money, is not riches, is not a newer car, is not a better uh, career. All of these things are good, but what we really need deep inside, we need our names to be changed. Uh, Jacob has to stop being Jacob and has to live as Israel. Because Jacob is very tiring. Very tiring to who? To himself and to everyone around him. Jacob is very draining. Being Jacob is very draining. Being Jacob is death. All, all what you are carrying is death. To yourself first, to myself. I, when, I, when I live as Jacob, I bring death to myself first. Because I'm, I'm fighting with everything. I'm fighting with everyone. I'm fighting with, with myself. I'm trying to achieve all of these dreams. And some of them, some of them happen, some, some of them not. I feel always that I... If you compare yourself with anyone at any moment, at any nation, you will always find someone better than you and someone lower than you. If you so stop comparing. Stop fighting. What I should, what I should start doing? Uh, start receiving uh, a true blessing from the Lord. And what is that? New name. What is yes? A new name. A new identity. This is a true blessing. That Jacob will be transformed to be Israel. Hey, hey, hey! You, you do not need to do that fight. Stop living as if it is a fight. Relax. You are a prince. I love you, and I see you, yeah. and I know you by name. Remember Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus, I want to stay this night with you. Stop living at this, because living this way will, will get you deeper into the world system. Living this way will get you deeper into bondage. Not wolf, wolf. It, it will not free you from anything. Amen? Let's read from John 3. What I'm trying to do this morning to lay down some teaching, some biblical basis for our, our new identity in Christ. John 3 is, is a paragraph where Nicodemus, uh, a ruler of the Jews, went to Jesus at night and he, he, was, he, he wanted to ask him some questions. Hey Lord, how do I read my Bible? Hey Lord, how to pray more? Hey Lord, how, to, how do I fast more? Hey Lord, how do I do ministry more? Hey, how can I live in holiness? So Jesus told him, Hey Nicodemus, you, do not need, you, you don't need to do any more thing. You need to be born again. And that's the start of our Christian living. And I know that, that most of you are, are being born again, but I feel in my heart that I should share this. If, if you didn't receive the new birth, if you didn't receive Christ yeah. as your uh, Lord, we, sh we will be praying together uh, this morning to receive this new birth. Because it was not being about uh, being a Christian in name or, or from a Christian family or going to church. Nicodemus was the ruler of the Jews. He was a teacher. He was a rabbi. He knew, him, he knew all, all the stuff from the Old Testament. He all, you know, maybe he knows the Old Testament better than most of us. But he could not see or could not 
reach this kingdom of God. There was a name, there was a man of Pharisees from verse 1 named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher. Come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, he was asking, uh, Nicodemus was asking, hey, you are a teacher, as if I, all, I, I, I always uh, uh, vision, uh, see this story at this, as if Nicodemus is a rabbi, is a teacher, and he's coming to another teacher. So Nicodemus, the teacher, is ask, asking the, the other teacher, who is Jesus, hey, I am a teacher, and you are a teacher, and you are, it seems that you are doing more, you, you are doing miracles, you are doing signs and wonders. Please help me to, to do some of these. So Jesus answered him in verse, verse 3. Jesus answered and said to him, Hey Nicodemus, it's not about being a teacher. It's, it's not about head knowledge. It's about a life changing experience, right. which is being born again. Yeah. Hey, please, hear, hear me, please. Please. If, 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 if the, the Christian living is not about head knowledge, it's about spiritual transformation that happens in the heart. It's called new birth. Amen? Yes. Amen? And we would receive that together now. Amen? Amen. So, uh, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can be a man born again when he is old? Can, be, can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is being born again? Being born again is that the Lord... Uh, um, by, by the work of his cross, by the work of his resurrection, he removes the old self, the old man, as Romans 6 names it, he removes this old man from, from your spirit, and he births inside you a new spirit. As the verse said in 2 Corinthians 5.17, then if, if anyone in Christ, he is a new creation. You are a new creation. This new creation is not about head knowledge. It's about real transformation in your inner man, in your spirit, that you receive in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Can you please stand for a moment? I want to pray, then we will continue our message. Because this is the start of the Christian living. Please all, let us all close our eyes. Let us all close our eyes. If you have been born again, that's good. Please pray for others who still want to receive this new birth and still want to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord. If you have been far away from the Lord all these days, you have been living the way you are, you, have, you, you always feel that the Lord is, is far from you, you feel that the Lord is not near, you, you, you don't feel that the Lord is your Father, you don't acknowledge Him as a Father or as Lord, and you want to, to return back to Him, and you want uh, the Lord to be your Savior and to be your Lord. Just pray with me even, even in your heart. I, I, I encourage you to even move your lips and even uh, speak with a voice, even if it is uh, very, uh, very low, but please uh, move your lips and, and pray with your heart. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your cross. And I thank you for your resurrection. Lord Jesus, I, I thank you that your blood cleanses me from every sin, cleanses me from every iniquity. Lord, I believe that you are my Father. I believe that you love me. I believe that you are Lord. Lord, I repent. I come back to you. I come, I, I come back from every sin and every iniquity. I come back to you from, from my way of living. Lord Jesus, as the word says, that you give authority for those who are accepting you to become the children of God. To become, uh, I want, Lord, I believe, as I pray, that I become a child of God. And I receive, by your Spirit, this new birth, to become a new creation in Jesus Christ. Lord, I believe that your Holy Spirit would help me in my Christian daily walk. Lord, help me to read the Bible. Help me to help me to pray. Help me to understand your ways. I want to live with you. I want to live for you. Amen. Amen. Be seated. Thank you. God bless you.
jobless school. If you believe what you have been praying right now, the first thing of your identity, that you are a son of God. You are a son of God. I want to speak about maybe two or three identities that the Lord gives us. Let us read, I will make it quick. Make it quick. Let us read from Ephesians 2, verse 19. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. The good news is when you when you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, if you have been if you have received him. A long days ago, if you have just received him, I saw people praying, uh, God bless you, and, and uh, I believe that this is the best thing that can happen in someone's life, to be born again, and to start a, start a real relationship with, with God. And the Lord was speaking to me while I was in Egypt, that people will, will accept Jesus Christ as their Savior in this conference, and I believe some did. Uh, and if you want to speak more about this, you can speak with me, with any one of the leaders, with Theodore, with Saif, any one of the other leaders who are present here in the conference. Uh, the most important thing when, when I receive and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I become a son of God. And what that, is, that does that mean? I was speaking with someone yesterday. Being, being the son of God is like being the son of, as we say it in Egypt, in Arabic, Al Kibir Awi, the big one. I have become the son of the big one. <laughs> Uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, uh, actually, my parents are, are not bad. My parents both are physicians. My my father has left uh, has left uh, being a doctor and became a full full time ministry from thirty something years ago. Uh, but they made mistakes, as all parents do. I am a parent and uh, I do mistakes. They made mistakes. They made mistakes related to my identity. They made mistakes to how the, the way they raised me up. They made mistakes about maybe uh, uh, maybe speaking uh, condemnation or, or failure into into my life. Many times I don't feel like recognized or accepted or acknowledged or, or even seen. But now I know I am seen. But I'm not seen by my father, who is who is a, a respectable man, but he is he is weak. He's just a man. He's not with me now, but the Lord sees me now. He's with me now. Amen? Amen. When you become a son of God, you know that you have become a family of God. Yeah. The Lord is really, I, I, I tell this to, to, the young, to the young people in Egypt, many, many of us really d does not understand what does it mean to be a son of God or a daughter, a daughter of God. You, 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 uh, you hear these verses, you hear this sermon or, or preaching in church that you have become a son of God. Then you, you go out to, to your daily life and you, you stumble with these relationships or these weaknesses or people coming against you and you feel alone. So you come to the church and, and then you hear your pastor speaking about, hey, hey, remember that you are a daughter of God. So you, you come out of church, you say, yes, yes, I'm a daughter of God. But, but what? But people did this, but be people did that, but, but I don't feel uh, loved, I feel lonely. Hey, hey. Yes, you know, you know by mind, you know by, by head that you are a son of God, but you didn't really know by heart that you are a daughter of God. Because if, 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 the revelation is come to, if the revelation comes to your heart that you are a son of God, you will not say but. You will not say but. Bas, is in Arabic. Bas. But, but uh, I feel alone. How, how, how can you feel alone if you are a son? I, and I'm not condemning you. I'm not sending you con condemnation. I'm, I'm not telling you that you are bad. I'm just telling you that it needs a real revelation. It needs a real revelation, revelation to know that I am seen. I am recognized. I am loved. I'm not alone. The Lord is with me all day. Every day. Even when I feel he is not here. Even if I don't feel it, if I don't uh, uh, sense that I am worth it, if I don't think that I can, uh, I can see him or I can touch him uh, during worship or he is touching me during worship, he is here for me. I am a son of God, and I am a son of the big one. I, I am the son of the most important person on on this whole universe. Yeah, that's in the Amen and the Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am the son of the big one. 
Is, is, is there anyone here, son of the big one? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. So what, what do you do when you feel lonely? You remind yourself. What do you do when you feel that you need this like on Instagram or this reaction on Facebook or this more views on TikTok? What do you feel when, when, when you feel that you are left alone by your friends or, or cast out from your friends or cast out from your family or, or no one really likes you? Ah, oh, yes, yes, uh, uh, this, is, was, this, is, uh, this was Jacob. But the Lord changed my name. I became, I became Israel. Yeah, I have become, yeah, become Israel. Yeah, I have become, I have become a son of God. I have become, I have become a son of God. He is really with me. He's, he really sees me. He is really supporting me. He's really pushing my back yeah. forward. He's really encouraging. Every good thing. I, I want to read this verse yeah. to Jacob from the Epistle of Jacob, chapter 1. James, sorry, James. It's more James. James, not Jacob. There is no Epistle of Jacob. I don't, I, actually, I don't know why, why is Jacob. His name is Jacob. Why is translated the New Testament James and the Old Testament Jacob? You should, you should change it. Yeah, uh, you should change it. His name is Jacob. Old Testament Jacob and New Testament James. You should do like a uh, revival. Yeah, you should protest and change it. Make it in the New Testament Jacob. So the book of James. I do not know why his, his name is James. He should be Jacob. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, verse 16. Chapter 1, verse 16. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Amen. Every good thing and every good perfect gift, yeah. all what the Father has for you is every good gift and every every good thing and every perfect gift. Love is a good thing. Hatred is not. Grace is a good thing. Judgment is not. Amen. Condemnation is not. Death is not. Suicidal thoughts is not. But every every thought of life, of hope, of uh, of peace, of righteousness, yeah. is coming from the Father of Christ. Right. Amen? Yeah. And He is my Father. And He's pouring His gifts, His good things, and His perfect gifts unto His children. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen? The second identity, the first identity is we are sons. The second identity. Hmm. I'm thinking which one to choose because I want to, to finish my message with a certain thing. Uh, let's go to First Peter uh, chapter 2. First Peter. This is Peter, correct? Yes. Does he has another name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one I know I'm sure about. <laughs> another name is Second Peter. Yeah. <laughs> First Peter chapter two. Verse nine, the, the verse we have on on the bracelets. Verse nine. Yeah, verse nine. But you are a chosen generation. A royal priest of the holy nation is one special need people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Do you know that the, what does the word chosen generation, what does the word generation means in, in Greek? It means species, breed. It's not, about, it's not speaking about a generation as a group of people living on the same time. It is speaking that you are a chosen species. You are a new creation. What does new creation mean? A new creation means that doesn't maybe maybe uh, we understand new creation means that I, I have been living in sin I have been uh, uh, living in darkness and now the Lord uh, making all things new which means that I will be living in righteousness and in holiness I will read my Bible then everything become new no that 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 is not it that is you trying to be that is you trying to do things a new creation means that you in your spirit man in your spiritual being there is a new creation a new type of being. That, that, that didn't exist before. Can I say it right? Yeah. Do, do I say it right? Yes. Do you understand me? Okay. This new creation did not exist before. There is this mixture, there is this unity between God and man. Who is, who is the first to start this new creation? 
Yes, correct. Jesus Christ. This Jesus Christ is the head of this new creation. Fully God and fully man. Right now, if you believe that you are a son of God, you have become a new creation. What does new creation mean? It, it doesn't mean that you will now start to live good and you will now start to, to, to pray and to, to read your Bible and to go to church. Yeah, that, that's, that's good. But, but that doesn't mean that you are a new creation. Being a new creation means that you are inside your spirit man. You have become a new species. Did not exist before. Do you know when, when you watch National Geographic or Discovery Channel and you find uh, they, they discover these new species of butterflies or these new species of fish or these new species? Of... Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. They, oh, oh they, we found these new species. We, we didn't know that it, it, it exists before. Yeah, you are a new species. You did, you did not exist before. What is this new species? It, you are not just a man. What I'm trying to say that you are not just a, a mere human being that is trying to live good. Right. No, you are not. You are not like that. You have become an eternal being. Mm -hmm. You have become a Christ-like. Yeah. Christ was fully man and fully God. Yeah. You have become a partaker. Uh, that uh, like like the epistle of Second Peter says, chapter one. You have become a partaker of the divine nature. Mm -hmm. Hey hey hey. Think about that for a moment. A moment. You have become a partaker of. Oh, you don't know the verse. Second Peter, chapter one, verse three. You have become. Open it. Open it. Yeah. Second Peter chapter one, verse three. Three or four. Three. Yeah. You have become a partaker of the. Did you find it? Divine nature. No. What is this translation? Yes. Right. No, 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 no. Second you what? Second Chapter one? one? Verse one. Four. 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 You have become partakers of that? What does it mean? Oh, I'm just a uh, normal, you know, when you stumble, when you face these difficulties, when you face this uh, difficult stuff and in, in work and in relationships and with you. Oh, I'm just a, a normal human being. How, 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 how does God ask me to forgive? How does God ask me to, to love? How does God ask me to minister? How, how, how does uh, the Lord expect me to love these people? To, uh, I am just a normal human being. No, you are not. You are not. If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. Ah, you mean a new creation like I'm, I will be doing this good thing? No, you are a new species. You did not exist before. You are, you are a, a, a miraculous unity. Fully man and fully God inside you. The Holy Spirit is inside you. You have become a partaker of the divine nature. So uh, please, uh, I love, oh my God. This, this story about, about Paul, about Paul, the apostle Paul, when he comes out of the ship, and then when he lights out fire, and then these snakes come out of the... I love this story so much. Please read it in, in Acts 28. Yeah. And then the, this serpent co comes out and... It, it, I want to get it in, in English. <laughs> no, not just... Yeah, not just translate what I know it, it in Arabic. Yeah, I'm, I'm fully aware that, that if, if you are blessed by any of what I'm saying, it's, 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 it's only by the Holy Spirit, because I cannot even speak. Hallelujah! It's only for the glory of God. <laughs> it's one of the times that I am 100% sure it is more than the glory of God. <laughs> By the grace of God. <laughs> no, 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 man, I don't want to be good. <laughs> Please read it, text 28. Yeah? I, I just I want to give you the, back, the background of this story. Paul was traveling by, by sea, and there was a storm. Uh, why was he traveling? He was not traveling for a vacation. He was not traveling to go to Hawaii or, uh, or, or have a, a, good, uh, a good summer vacation in the beaches of Miami. No, he was, he was going to minister. He was going to meet Caesar in Rome. So he, he was going for the Lord or against the Lord? For the Lord, for, for the sake of the kingdom of God. And while he was in his way, the storm came up and, and the Lord gave him a promise. Hey Paul, you will arrive safe, and the Lord has given you all those the prisoners with you in the ship, and no one will, will die. And, and it happened. 
uh, it was winter. So uh, in the Mediterranean, it, it becomes very uh, storm in, in, in winter. Uh, Paul, Paul came out of the sea. He is wet. He has been uh, swimming to, to the beach. He is wet. It is cold. So what all these poor guys think is thinking about? To light up some fire. So to get up, to get up some heat, to get warm. Now when they had escaped, verse 1, uh, they, they then found out that the island was called Malta. And the primitive people showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled a fire and made us all welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat. Do, do, are you reading the verses? Yeah. Yes. As a, a, a viper came out of because of the heat and fastened itself on his hand. Huh? And they? Yeah. What does it mean? Yes. Uh, Paul was raising his hand and this viper is hanging on, yes, hanging on his hand. Yeah. Yeah? So, so when the primitive people, the people who are on the island, who knows this, this type of vipers, yeah. they saw it before. It, it is living among them. When the primitive people saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, no doubt, this man is a murderer whom thought he has escaped the sea, yet justice does not, does not allow to live. Oh, this man has been a murderer, so he escaped the sea, so God is just bringing his judgment to this man to kill him by this viper. So they, they are saying that this viper is a deadly viper. He should die, because if they know the viper, they are living on the island. Okay? But he shook off the kitchen. What? It is not a mouse. It's, it's not a cockroach. It's not a bee. It, it's, it, it's not a bee that entered the, the car and we want to get it out. It's a viper hanging on his hand. What did, what did Paul do? Shook it off. He shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. However, they were expecting, they were, they were th sitting like this and watching this, this guy is coming from the sea and this broken ship. They are just watching. However, they were expecting because they are the, who are the citizens of this island, they know the viper, they know this snake, they know this serpent, they know that if, if this viper bites you, you should be blow and then die. They, they would swell up or suddenly fall down dead, but after they had looked for a long time, or they waited for a long time, and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was, he was, oh, he was a murderer from maybe a couple of minutes ago. Now they changed their mind and yeah. he, he, they said he was a... Uh, what, what do I like about this story? Oh, many things. First of all, first of all, Paul did not pray. Please put yourself in the story. Not just read it like it is a Bible story or a... It's more like the Bible in English. Super book, man. Yeah. Super book. Yeah. Yeah. We were not watching the super book. You are reading the Bible that should transform your life. You are not watching the chosen. You are reading the Bible that should change your life. Okay? So put yourself in the story and put yourself with Paul on the island. You find this poor Paul wet, all wet, all soaking wet, and just bringing some sticks to warm, warm himself up and to dry up. If, if, if I am, if I am, yani, was, was poor, I would say, oh, oh my God, I, 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 I'm here at this ship and in this island and I'm all wet for the Lord. Why, Lord, are you doing this for me? I, I will become, uh, I, I will become uh, speaking again to the Lord. Why did you do this to me? I, I'm this poor guy. All I, I want to do is to bring the gospel to Rome and to bring the gospel to Caesar. And all what I have been uh, reaping is this and this and this and this uh, hard times and these difficult times. Most of us will do this. Maybe, maybe the other who are very strong in their faith and their belief, they will uh, call some of the believers on the ship. Paul had some of them on the ship, like Luke, one of them. Hey, hey, look, look, hurry up, hurry up, look, look, look at this viper. Look what the enemy has done to me. Look, look, pray, 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 thanks, pray, thanks, pray, thanks. Oh, they get themselves bound up and they worship the Lord and I'm not against praying. For sure, I'm not against praying. If, if, if. If you have read the story and you found that Paul is calling for look for prayer, what would you say about Paul? He is a great, he is a great man of faith, correct or not? Yes. Right or not? He is a great man of faith. He is praying while the viper is hanging from his hand. What astonishes, astonishes me that Paul did not even pray. 
He didn't even bother. Hey, return to the fire revive. Why? Because in his uh, inner most being, he has realized he's a new creation. I hope this story enlightens your, your mind to understand what his new creation means. They, has, they, they, was, they were saying about him, he was a murderer. But now they changed their minds. They are telling that he is a god. Yeah, 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 he is a part. No, he, uh, of course I do not mean that, uh, that we are becoming gods to be worshipped. No, but we have become partakers of the divine nature. Do you have this Holy Spirit inside you? Yes. So why are you living like you don't? Why, why are you living life? You are always lonely. You are just a normal human being. You cannot do anything. Yeah, yeah. I can. Oh, hey, Jesus, I cannot do, do anything without you. So Jesus looks to you from heaven. Yes, yes, I know that you don't. You cannot do anything without you. And, and, and you are not without me. I am with you. I cannot forgive these people. No, you can't. Why? Because the love of God has been poured into our heart with the spirit who is given unto us. Romans 5. I cannot love these people. No, you can. Why? Because Christian, you have the hope of glory. Yes. Hey, I cannot live holy. No, no, you can. The spirit of holiness is inside you. Right. Stop depending on you. Stop living as Jacob. Mm. Maybe you need to stop living as Jacob. Maybe you need to, 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 to accept this biblical reality that we are in Christ, a new creation. We are just normal human beings. And that's how we start living as, as Christ on earth. We start releasing uh, God's love and God's power and God's presence and God's healing to, to the nation, to people around us. Yeah. Not just by, by being uh, Christians and by being religious and going to church and reading our Bibles. All Again, all of these things are good, but they are not uh, the change or the tr transformation itself. The real transformation happens through the inner man, the spiritual man that is in you. First of all, you are a son of God, you are a daughter of God. You are not alone. You have a father. You are not orphan. You have a father. Right. You have a father who sees you, who acknowledges you, who recognizes you, who loves you, who calls you by special name, yeah. who gives you new identity, who removes all of these old identities that you had for so long and all of these that you had taken from your parents and from your family and from your friends and school and, na and the nation you are living in and calling you with new names. Yeah. I know, you know, the Armenians, many of them are still, until now, are very broken by, by the, uh, what the Turkish did in, in, from 200 years ago. And why is that? Because they, they cannot accept the new reality in Jesus Christ. Although they are Christians. Although they are Christians, but still there is this spirit of sorrow and spirit of, of sadness that passes through the generations from 200 years ago. And why is that? Because they, can, they, they just cannot realize that I am a new creation. I'm not an Armenian. I'm a heavenly being. I, I don't mean that you 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 refuse your citizen like I am a Chaldean or I am an Egyptian or I am a, an American. No, no, you, you you understand all of this, but this is not your root identity. My root identity is in Christ, right. not of being uh, Iraqi or Chaldean or Egyptian or American or any of these. Mm -hmm. I am a citizen. Of, I am a citizen of heaven. Mm -hmm. I am a son of God, mm -hmm. and this is my new uh, identity. Hey, you know Egyptians are always are always late. Egyptians are always reckless. Egyptians, they use their tongues bad all the time. I'm not an Egyptian. If I live, if I live like Egyptian, I, I, I will leave my, my, heavenly, my, my heavenly citizenship. I should not live as an Egyptian. And you should not live as a Chaldean or, or an Iraqi or an American. Every, every nation on earth has, has its points of strength yeah. and has its points of weaknesses. Sure. Every nation on earth. You should not live as a so-and-so or this nation or this nation. Yeah. You, you should live as a Christian yeah. coming from heaven. And this is your, your, your true identity. Hey, in, in, if I, if I, uh, Americans, uh, all, may, no, not all, but yeah, most of the nation uh, are, are for the love of money. What about Egyptians who are all in bondage? Who are being slaves? Slaves to what? It's a spirit. We have it inside us. Every nation has, has its own thing that we inherited from. But we have to, to stand in this realization. If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. Right. You become a partaker of the divine nature. Right. You are not just a human being. 
the man you or the woman you 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 used to know, you used to be the, the one with all of this stuff going around my life, and I'm just making no. The Lord is starting to call us new names. Amen? Amen. Can you give me an extra 15 minutes? Yeah. We have time. Sure? Yeah, you have time, but do you have strength? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Next 15 minutes? I will return to Daniel. I, I, come, I want to, to end uh, the message this morning by four things that Daniel did to, to win the war on identity in, in Babylon. Mm -hmm. To learn just, just these small four, four things. Number one, if you are writing, please write them down. Number one. What is the first thing Daniel did to, uh, to win over, to have victory over this war of identity? Number one, identify the war and refuse the training of the enemy. And that, that what we have been speaking about yesterday. What we have been speaking yesterday is about identifying the world, about the Lord opening our eyes to identify the world on our identity. Number one, identify the world and refuse the training of the enemy. You can find these, the verses about it in Daniel 1, verse 8 to 12. Daniel 1, verse 8 to 12. Number two. Number two, the true and living relationship with the Lord. Let's read from Daniel 6. After Darius, the king has ordered that Daniel should be thrown into the den of the lions. Darius speak this sentence about Daniel. And when he came, Darius, when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God. Daniel, do you know the story of, of Daniel in the den of lions? Yes. Yeah, the Lord sent his angels and... Uh, closed the mouth of the lions and shut the, the lion's mouth. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve do you, are you opening your Bible? which verse? which verse? 20 20 yeah, 620 has your God whom you serve you serve a you serve what? sorry? yes, thank you shukran yasif rabbana khaleed continually whom you serve continually not just in hard times, not just in difficult times, not just on Sundays. When the decree has come up from the king that no one should ask anything from any other god or any other man, Daniel went to his home as he does three times a day and he opened his window towards Jerusalem and he prayed to the Lord. Why? To piss off the king. No, he is doing this daily, three days for three days. Just to, uh, to make him mad, no? <laughs> Just to make a political stand, no? He has been used to pray three times a day, daily. And, 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 and the beautiful thing that this is, this is the king's uh, testimony about Daniel. Hey Daniel, the Lord that you have been serving continually. Number two, the true living relationship with the Lord. Amen? Amen? Being in the Word of God, being in prayer, being in church, uh, being obedient to, to the Lord, yeah. and being living as, as He does. Number three, fellowship with the body of Christ. Fellowship with the body of Christ. Let's open Daniel 3. I'm just giving you the keys from the book of Daniel. Because I, as I told you yesterday, that Daniel was uh, a prophetic image to, to every generation uh, standing against the spirit of Babylon. Fellowship with the body of Christ. Yeah, Daniel, Daniel 2, verse 17. When Daniel found himself that he that, that he, he should inter interpret 
the, the king's dream and uh, t tell the should he should tell first the king's dream and then say its meaning then Daniel went to his house and made the decision known to Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah his companions that they might seek mercies from the God of heaven concerning this secret so that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Babylon, uh, sorry, Daniel did not stand alone on this one. He called his, 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 his brothers in the Lord. He called his friends. Hey, friends, we should stand together. I need prayer for this and this and this. Hey, I'm under attack. Hey, I, uh, uh, I fear I'm losing my job. Hey, I think that uh, Satan is against me in this sickness or in this spiritual attack. Hey, I need help. I cannot stand alone in this. You cannot stand alone in life. Okay? It is, actually, it is, it, is, it is just arrogant uh, to think that you can stand alone in life. A human being is not designed to stand alone in life. We are not designed to stand alone. Even the Lord, when, when he created Adam, he, he said to himself, it is not good for Adam to be alone. Amen? I'm not just speaking about marrying. I'm speaking about living in a community. We need each other. Amen? We need each other. We need brothers and, and sisters who would encourage, who would pray, who would push us forward, who would remind us of our distance as I was speaking yesterday and today. Who would speak, hey, hey, man, you are Daniel, you are not just Remember? You are Azariah, not Abnahu. Remember? Amen? Amen? Number four, and the last one. What did Daniel did to win the war over Babylon, living for the kingdom cause? Daniel 9. You know, uh, do you know the book? Uh, I, I, I cannot remember the name of the author, but the name of the book is uh, Man searching for a meaning. This this psychiatrist from the World War II who was a Jew. You don't know it, correct? I don't. I don't think. Psychiatrist can in the war against Turkey can be Jewy. And the book the the person who is talking about the meaning. Who? Yeah, Franklin. Yes, Franklin. Yes, correct. Yes, you are my man. You watch the same movies I watch, and you read the same books I read. Like this? Yes. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Victor Frankl. Victor Frankl. <laughs> this, this man, Victor Frankl, was a Jew, and he was in the some Holocaust in the World War II, Second World War. Um, actually, he, he came up with this theory in psychiatry. And which is still, uh, still, uh, yeah, acknowledged today, respected today, that the main that that any human being can withstand any type of of, of uh, hardships if he found the meaning in the hardship. Okay, and I believe that we are called to live for a meaning. I want to tell you this. Do do, do you remember the three points that we have uh, told uh, spoke about uh, Daniel? Uh, Daniel identified the war and refused to be trained. Daniel had a true and living relationship with the Lord. And Daniel had fellowship with the body of Christ. I believe if Daniel had done the first three things, but he didn't do the fourth, he would not succeed in his, in his war. If you live uh, identifying the war and always uh, seeing the spiritual war and everything around you and become very because it has a downside. Uh, you, can be, you can become very occupied by Satan, by uh, conspiracy theory and what he is doing, and, and Disney and Netflix and this stuff doing these things, and you know? So you are always like uh, a madman who is posting this stuff on Facebook. I have some friends of this. Posting, <laughs> posting these things about Facebook, who is always speaking about Disney and flex, uh, Netflix and homosexuality, and okay, okay, so, so, uh, so then we are, we are going all to die, and no, there is hope in Christ. Yeah. Okay, so you cannot you, you, you can't only you, you cannot win this war by only identifying the war and having a true and living relationship with God and only having people around you. You have to live for a cause. Mm -hmm. yeah. You you have you have to find a true kingdom and eternal cause that keeps you living every day. Right. Why do you wake up in the morning? You have to ask yourself this question. Wow. 
Why do I wake up this morning? Oh, I am I'm waking up this morning. I, I will tell you some Christian and I'm, I'm finishing up with this, okay? So bear with me this five minutes. I can tell you some Christian answers. Oh, I am I'm waking up in the Lord to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Believe me, you will worship him better than in heaven. <laughs> right or not? Yes. You will worship the Lord better in heaven. So why are you staying with this earth right now? I'm a fool? Oh. Yes. <laughs> I'm just asking you if, if you can understand me. You have, the, we need a human being. You know, you know when, when God, when the Lord God put Adam in Eden, He gave him a value for his, for his presence on earth. He told him, work this garden in Genesis 2. You have to work, you have to do something. You are not just, just living, enjoying in the beauty of the garden. Many, many of us believe this is the Christian life. We are just enjoying, yay, Jesus, yay, And we go to conferences and attend these meetings and attend conferences. And we're like, hey, yes, I'm a Christian. Yes, I'm all for Jesus. Yeah, so what, what are you living for today? Hey, I'm just living for, yes. What, 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 what is the, uh, the, the, the practical application of this living to Jesus? Yeah. You have to live for a cause. You have to live for, for a purpose that gets you out of the bed every morning. Sorry. If you cannot find this thing, your life on earth has no meaning. And for, for this reason, maybe you are depressed. Because there is no meaning in your daily life. I'm not against worshiping the Lord. I'm not against the community of believers. I'm not against identifying the, 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 the war. I told you about these points. But you can, you should identify the war. And you should worship the Lord and be in His word. But I, I assure you, in heaven, we all will be great worshiper leaders. We will not have this flesh which hinders us from entering the presence of the Lord freely and, and worship, worshiping the Lord face to face. Yeah. We will have this community. Hey, we will not just have us together in heaven. We will have Abraham and David and Jesus yeah. himself with us. Correct? But, but now I'm not in heaven. Are you in heaven? No. Are you in heaven? Where are you now? You are in this earth, correct? You have to find a daily purpose to wake you up in the morning. <laughs> if you cannot find it, you will, you, you will not win this war. Mini will I mean? Yes. Amen. Amen. You need, you need to have a kingdom course. Why? To get you up out of the bed each morning. To get you out of depression. To get you out of meaningless life. To get you out of sensing that after a while, uh, I got bored of these church meetings. Why, why are you doing? Why are we doing all of this? Yes, well, why are we, you should ask yourself. Why do I, ch I attend church meetings? Just for the sake of church? No, we are coming to, together. We are uh, we we learn the word of God together. We are encouraged together to go out to the world, yes. not just to 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 stay with each other and hold hands and sing. Uh, any, any song? Kumbaya. Uh, yeah, you have Kumbaya here? Yeah. Also? Yeah. <laughs> I will say it, but... <laughs> it's not just about Kumbaya or... Or no, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. It's about the kingdom pose. Uh, let, let's read this final, final verse from Daniel 9. Daniel was at his best in Babylon. Daniel 9. Daniel 9. 9 verse 1. Daniel was at his best in Babylon. He was at the top of the society. He was the second man after the king. He had his good friends, Mishael and Azariah and Hananiah. He has his good God who is, has been worshipping him all day long. But Daniel was living for a kingdom cause. While he is in Babylon, he remembers Jerusalem and he remembers that the captivity has to end by the end of these 70 years. So Daniel, without reading it, just, just, just write the, the verse, Daniel 9 from 1 to 4. Daniel stood before God asking for Jerusalem and asking for the kingdom of God in Jerusalem. What I want to, to end my message with, you are born for a meaning and this meaning uh, should be bigger than you. You are eternal. You, you have to live for an eternal meaning. 
if you live for a less than eternal meaning, you are living for something less than you. And it does not worth it. Amen? If you are living for something that is not eternal, you are, you are wasting your eternal being in something less. As if I give you a uh, hundred dollar and you give me a, 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 a biscuit or a, or a Kit Kat. I'm, wa I'm wasting my hundred bucks, correct? I'm wasting it. Why? Because you are giving me less? Don't waste your life. Your life meant, meant to be spent in a, an eternal purpose. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Let's pray. Let's pray together.